Hey guys, it's Mr. Plinkett, and I'm going to do a review of the new Star Wars trailer. And I may be even having a clip of Tyrone Magnus in there. Woo! <laughs> Yo, man, I love Mr. Plinkett. Mr. Plinkett fucking kills me. I fucking love that character. And uh, someone sent me um, this Cinco de Star Wars. <laughs> I know this shit's going to be funny. And he said, can you spot yourself in this video? So I guess I'm in it. And uh, I would have reacted to this anyway because I love Mr. Plunkett. As a matter of fact, I'm mad they don't do more of Mr. Plunkett uh, reviews. But uh, let's, uh, let, let's get this in. Star Wars The Force Awakens is the most disappointing thing since my son. Oops, that's stuff with the garbage. Hey everyone, it's me, Mr. Plinker, and I'm finally back again to talk to you briefly about the new trailer that's out. Everybody's talking about it. The Ridiculous Six, the new Adam Sandler comedy. In fact, this film is so anticipated, tickets to see it are already being scalped. <laughs> it's gonna be a hit. Anyway, what I'm really talking about is the second Star Wars The Force Awakens trailer. And while reaction videos to these Star Wars trailers are nothing new, they mostly consist of... Come on, Wiz, come on! And... Oh shit, it's Luke talking! Mom! And a lot of yelling and screaming by loudmouth idiots. <laughs> What the fuck is wrong with these people? No one cares what you think about a trailer. Okay, now I'll tell you what I think about a trailer. Okay. Number one, pointless speculation. What would the internet be without endless and pointless speculation? Mm -hmm. Sure, I could use my time to volunteer at a homeless shelter, read to the blind, or push some dying crippled kid in his wheelchair outside in a park or whatever. Not a kid. But I'm going to speculate about a movie that will come out in eight months and that I'll forget about in eight minutes. Mm -hmm. I'll do what I want with my time. This is America. <laughs> anyway, this Force Awakens second trailer is much like the last one. The movie's going to be so earth shattering. It's going to change everything. Yeah, it's all the same shit. Just tell us what the movie is about. <laughs> Fuck all this. Remember when trailers were trailers? It's an epic of heroes. <laughs> She's crying. She's noticed it. Get away! Okay, now we'll talk endlessly about Star Wars. Number two new things in the Star Wars universe. So the first thing we all know is that there's a black guy in a stormtrooper costume. Yes. Which for some reason assholes on the internet had some kind of problem with. You people make me sick. And that's pretty hard to do. Mm -hmm. Coming from the guy who once ate a cat alive. It makes it tastier when it's uncooked. Anywho, after viewing the second trailer, it's pretty apparent that he's a good guy who's stowed away on an Imperial <laughs> ship or something. He's always sweating and scared. He's the guy flying the TIE fighter shooting lasers at the bad guys. So what? There's a black guy in a white stormtrooper uniform. Big deal. I'm not going to be upset when we find out that the guy in this uniform is Louis C.K. <laughs> we don't get more whiter than him. I have a feeling that this new Star Wars film will be different from your grandpa's Star Wars. It'll have a black guy that doesn't sell out his friends. Well, hello. Jedi, what have we here? It's going to be Leia or Luke's daughter. Right. And a Mexican that we can finally understand. Things are changing, you know, and I get with the times. Number three, what we can guess from what we see. Well, I guess sometime in the past, the Star Destroyer crashed on this planet, which is probably Tatooine. But probably won't be because it'll annoy me. Kind of like this wasn't LV-426. Yeah. What the fuck? I also see a trashed X-Wing in the foreground, so I assume there was some kind of battle here. Apparently, the Empire still hasn't learned to not fuck with the rebels. <laughs> Jesus 
right. Or I guess all this trash was left over from the alleged random battles versus the Empire that supposedly took place during the end of Return of the Jedi. You know, everyone everywhere, everywhere started attacking the Empire. It took them all down at once. Yeah, right. <laughs> And I guess even though 90 years ago cartoon aliens could clone people, Luke still can't get a hand. And that's not funny. I mean, one that's not robotic. Or maybe that's the hand of this evil Sith guy touching R2-D2. Mm -hmm. Look, he's got a robotic hand. I think that's him. Or is that Luke? Because Luke's voiceover is playing. I don't know. Oh, shit, it's Luke talking! Oh, oh wait, that's Darth Vader's head. The last time we saw Darth Vader, his body was being burned at an Ewok party. <laughs> a party that was apparently too wild. So George Lucas changed the music to light jazz. Yeah. Yeah, I thought that was stupid that he changed the music. That was... George Lucas, you keep ruining everything. George Lucas is so bad, he even ruined World War II for blacks. Tuskegee Airmen. I'm so, so sucked. sorry. What was I talking about? Star Wars? Oh, yeah. Anywho, now they show us that someone apparently saved or grave robbed Vader's head. Uh -huh. And there's this weird yeah. drawing of like a Sith Lord <laughs> holding his head up. What is this, Hamlet? It's like poetry, it rhymes. Again, it's like poetry, so if they rhyme. Dude, he's gonna By the way, it. Internet, no, this does not look like me. I'm much more oh, ugly. Shit. So why is Vader's head there? Did some asshole producer at Disney say we need to get Darth Vader back in this shit? Are they gonna dig up those Globubians and clone him from his burnt out skull DNA? My guess is yes. That's exactly what's gonna happen because it's stupid. The resurrection of Darth Vader though would mean big box office bucks in 2017 or 2019 or 2022 or 2026 or 2028. Take that, Marvel! Speaking of digging up corpses, Harrison Ford, Carrie Fisher, <laughs> and Hamill are back. Of course. Now, in my opinion, the only one that should have come back was Luke. Leia and Han's stories have already been told. Just look at how useful they were in Jedi. When he comes back, I won't get in the way. And at 40 years old, Leia still hadn't realized she had the fucking force in her. Mark Hamill is now pretty old in real life, so him being an old Luke Obi-Wan type is perfect. It brings things full circle. Again, it's like poetry, so if they rhyme. Our Han Solo? What is he gonna do? Him and Chewie are the two characters from the original films that we do see in this new trailer. Apparently they find the Millennium Falcon after some time. You know, like being apart from it, or, or losing it, or something. Chewie, we're home. Here's my problem. It's only been a notion that Han and Chewie were best friends. Nah. Jedi, <laughs> in episode four, A New Hope, Han kept Chewie around because he was large, intimidating, and violent. <laughs> Han regarded the Millennium Falcon more so as an expensive sports car than a home. It was a means to an end. Fast ship. You've never heard of the Millennium Falcon? He boasted about how fast it was and how he could smuggle illegal shit in it really well. It was something he won in a bet and he valued monetarily. Your ship? Hey. Remember, you lost her to me fair and square. Only in Jedi was he concerned with its safety as his best friend yeah i just got a funny feeling like i'm not gonna see her again because that movie was made for five-year-olds <laughs> they go too wimpy and sappy with solo to suck kind of like when they brought leonard nimoy back in star trek it sucked you alone must take command of your ship now over your dead body she's dead Jim. It sucked just like it did in Jedi. All Han Solo did was try and hotwire a door. He didn't do anything good in Jedi and it sucked. 
Han Solo's character is a big asshole. He should have died at the end of Empire. Now he lives in a home, no pun intended, with his best friend Chewie. And Chewbacca hasn't aged today. Where's his gray hair? Roberta Harrison Ford said, don't let that ape have any gray hair. It'll make me look old. Hey, give it up, Grandpa. You're 80. <laughs> the first thing that happened on the set is you broke your hip. We're trying to be cool. If they play Harrison Ford is trying to be the young Han Solo, it'll turn out just like you know what. Part time. <laughs> oh, I can't wait for the new Star Wars movie. As a guy who said J.J. Abrams would be the perfect person to direct modern Star Wars films, I still stand by that. He makes amazing, fun, well-paced, exciting sci-fi action films and is much more suited to doing Star Wars than he is to doing Star Trek. I have a secret fear, though, that his films will be too good. That kids today with their fast-paced ADD movies and explosions will look back at the original trilogy as outdated, quaint, or at the very worst, boring. Probably. It happens. That's how it is. <laughs> people from the 70s and 80s probably looked back at old Flash Gordon serials. It's nice JJ seems to be doing things correctly, though. Mm -hmm. Using more practical sets, costumes, props, and utilizing CGI appropriately. Unlike the way someone else did it. As long as these films capture the magic, adventure, and wonder that the original films did, and aren't terrible or insulting, well, I'll be happy as a clam. I do, however, worry about what I'll call Marvelitis, which means every movie, some kind of new Darth whatever Sith monster will emerge and want to seek revenge and blah, 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 revenge, and then blow things up with the super weapon, and then everyone will learn to work as a team after three hours of nausea-inducing, wild, overdone action scenes that will make you want to throw up. JJ's two Star Trek movies, while fun and exciting, were all about revenge, explosions, action scenes, planet-destroying doomsday devices, and learning to work together as a team, or learning that we're all a family. Oh. I really hope he doesn't go that schmaltzy route with Star Wars. And I hope he doesn't contract Marvelitis. If he does, I got a doctor he can see. Dr. Kevorkian! Yeah. <laughs> because Star Wars movies are better than that. They're about much more than pointless action sequences that don't progress the plot at all. Learning to work together as a team, pandering to kids, or planet-destroying doomsday devices. Oh no. I have to go now. <laughs> I love Mr. Poikin. I don't even know who I am anymore. Fuck me. Ow. The only thing I don't like about every time they show the black guy was he's always sweating. <laughs> I can't even do the voice that he would now. Every time I see the black dude in both trailers, he's sweating and scared every single time. I mean, he better, they may not come in there with no runaway slave shit. Is you the Jedi's that's going to treat me? How to use the forces, son? You know what I mean? I don't need none of that shit. But anyway, post your comments down below. Let me know what you thought about this. If you love Mr. Plankett, say aye. And if you enjoyed my reaction, hit the like button, subscribe, and share. If you did not, you're on my asshole. Hit the like button, subscribe, and share. One million subscribers. Woo!